So Liana is a new software wallet developed by the team at Wizard Sardine, and it's one of the first software wallets to take advantage of Miniscript. So the policy that Liana uses is here, and as I went into in a different video, policy compiles down to Miniscript, and Miniscript is an encoding of Bitcoin script. So what does this policy do? Well, it ensures that funds can only be moved from a certain address if you have a signature associated with a primary public key or you have a signature associated with a recovery public key and a certain amount of time has passed. Okay, so there are two keys here. There's a primary key and a recovery key. The primary key can be used at any time and the recovery key can be used as long as a certain amount of time has passed, as long as the time lock has expired. So why would you be interested in using this policy or why would you be interested in using Liana? Well, this policy offers you the opportunity to move your funds to a different address, to a different setup, assuming that you can detect when the recovery private key is leaked or an attack against access to that recovery private key. Okay. So in the case that you detect an attacker has gained access to your recovery private key, you move your funds to a different setup and because this recovery key is time locked, you have until the time lock expires to move your funds away from this address. The time lock wasn't there, the recovery key could be used at any point, and if the attacker gained access to the recovery key, they could move the funds instantly to address their control, and you've lost your funds. So that's why you would be interested in using such a policy. Now, we can compare it to some other potential policies or um, other potential setups. We could say, well, why not just use a two of three threshold, right? And um, the downside to using a two of three is that every single time you move the funds, you need to produce two signatures associated with two public keys. Um, and in comparison to the, the Liana policy, you only need the primary, the primary key. You only need to produce one signature associated with the primary key every time you move the funds. So it's a lot more cumbersome to move your funds with a two of three because um, you need to produce two signatures from, say, two signed devices every time you move the funds. Then, in comparison to a two of two, um, with a two of two, if you lose one of the keys, if you lose, say, your primary key or your recovery key, your funds are then locked up forever in a two of two case, because you have to produce two signatures associated with these two different keys um, to be able to move your funds. You lose one, your funds are locked up forever. That's the comparison of the two of two. And then if you were to compare this policy to a one of two, in the one of two case, the recovery key could be used at any point in time, right? There's no time lock imposed on the recovery key. So if the recovery key is leaked or attack against access to the recovery key, they can move the funds instantly and you've lost, um, you've, you've lost your Bitcoin. You don't have this window um, until the time lock expires to move the funds um, once you've detected that your recovery key is leaked or um, an attack has gained access to it. So that is why you would be interested in using this policy that Liana uses. Um, there's, there's lots of subtleties involved. I won't get into backups because backups introduces a another la layer of complexity on top of this, but you can see why um, this um, gives you something that these schemes don't. It gives you the ease of only needing one signing device to move your funds, and it also gives you this protection against the possibility of an attacker gaining access to your recovery key, and giving you that possibility to escape from this, from this policy. Um, and prevent the attacker uh, stealing your funds um, once they gain access to this recovery key.